Good evening. Welcome to LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. Don't forget, join our church every Sunday, 9 a.m., online and in person. Ito po yung aming mga fellowship schedule. Balikan po natin, mahaba-haba yung naging bakasyon natin sa journey of a lifetime natin. Yung 52 weeks journey of a lifetime, no? Ang uh, ating walk through the Bible series. So, tapos na po tayo. Nakafocus tayo sa Old Testament. Tapos na tayo sa Pentateuch or yung first five books. Tapos na rin tayo dun sa 12 historical books. At uh, ngayong gabi, tatapusin natin yung third section ng Old Testament, yung books of poetry. So nagsimula tayo sa book of Job, Psalms, at dito tayo nag-stop kasi nagkaroon tayo ng Christmas break. And ngayon, tatlo yung tutuhugin natin. No? Ipa-fast cut natin yung tatlong books. Yung Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. No? Since... Uh, uh, Matagal-tagal tayo ng bakasyon dahil ang Christmas break. Eh, tatlo ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Ayan. So, bago ang lahat, huwag niyong kalimutan na sundan kami sa mga social media account namin para updated kayo sa ating uh, walk through the Bible. So, last on number 17 na tayo out of 52. So, tatlo ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. At uh, simulan na natin sa Book of Proverbs, The Way of Wisdom. Nako, ano bang mga tututunan natin dito sa Book of Proverbs? Alam niyo ba na ang English word na proverb is really composed of two Latin words. Ang pro, which means instead of, and verba. Okay, I found this on the web. Those are two words. Okay, see. So, sorry. Sige, Siri. Thank you. Hindi kita kinakausap. <laughs> Ulitin ko lang talaga na si Siri. Ang English word na proverb ay uh, composed of two Latin words. No? Ang pro, which means instead of. And uh, berva, which means words. So a proverb in, in a, is a short statement that is used instead of many words. Uh, furthermore, ang Hebrew word for proverb means comparison. Uh, therefore, these proverbs are wise sayings condensed into dramatic scenes or contrasts that are easily remembered. Alam nyo, this book teaches us the practical application of godliness. Almost every aspect of life is touched upon. No, kagaya ng our duty to God, to our parents, our children, neighbors, and our work, as well as our duty as citizens. Alam nyo, si Haring Solomon, no, who was famous for his wisdom and wealth, wrote most of the book of Proverbs. The Bible tells us God had given him wisdom and, under and understanding, exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand of the seashore. No? Siya ang pangunahin na sumulat nito. Alam nyo ba na merong 31 Proverbs? So bawat isang araw, pwede mong basahin. No? One for each day of the month. The chapter that is the number of the day of the month that you were born might be called your proverb. No? ano ibig sabihin? Kaya pwede mo itong i-memorize at uh, ang yung spiritual life will be deepened. Kagaya ko, ang birthday ko ay September 6. So, ibig sabihin, Proverb 6 ang aking uh, birthday proverb. Ano ba yung mga nakalagay doon? About financial entanglements, laziness, the malicious man, no? what the Lord hates, or warning against adultery. How about you? Ano ang iyong birthday proverb? Comment down below para mas masaya. Yeah? Share mo lang. So, what does the book of Proverbs have to have to say about the the uh, sa mga babae no kasi sa chapter 31 no, it closes the book of proverbs no, with one of the most wonderful chapters in the word of god madalas nga tong i-preach kapag ka, ano eh uh, mothers day 
sometimes no, it is called a chapter of a woman's rights. Sa Proverbs 31, it describes what a virtuous woman is really like. Basahin nga natin. Chapter 31, verses 10 to 31. Now, who can find a wife of noble character? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts her, trust in her, and he will not lack anything good. She rewards him with good, not evil, all the days of her life. Jump tie sa 26. Her mouth speaks wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Wow, parang nanay ko to. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women have done noble deeds, but you surpass them all. Wow. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Give, give her the reward of her labor and let her works praise her at the city gates. Wow. Alam niyo ba? The book of Proverbs is priceless. No, it is priceless to us as a guidebook for everyday living. We'd, we would all be much better people if we would read one chapter in this book each day for a month and put it into practice. What we read. Mm -hmm. Yun, ang fast cut ng Book of Proverbs. Ano naman? Ang pwede natin mabasa sa Book of Ecclesiastes. Alam niyo ba na ang word na Ecclesiastes eh, literally means preacher. no? And refers to the concept of a preacher speaking to a congregation of people. Si Solomon na naman, ang ating bida. No? Siya ang author of this book also. He records his experiences and attitudes while he was out of fellowship with God. Mm, ganun siya ka, ano, ano, ka candid. In this book, we see Solomon forsaking God and seeking satisfaction in philosophy and science. He looks at life with all its complexities and problems and asks the question, is life really worth Living. Mm -hmm. ano, ba yung, ano ba magandang sagot dyan? <laughs> Is life really worth living? Tingnan natin eh. Mayroong sagot dyan si... Mayroong nakasulat dyan no, sa Proverbs uh, sa Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. No? Ayun, nakalagay dito. Sabi, uh, I applied my mind to examine and explore through wisdom all that is done under heaven. God has given people this miserable task to keep them occupied. Mm. Alam nyo, in the first few chapters, Solomon speaks of many things. One might try to make life worth living. More than 25 times yung binanggit, he uses the phrase under the sun, now, which indicates the world seen only from human perspective. Eh, kasi nga eh, syempre, yun yung perspektibo natin. Kaya nga, ano eh, uh, iba yung perspektibo natin sa perspektibo ng Diyos. Hindi natin pwedeng pagkumparahin. No? So, dapat uh, ilapit pa natin yung sarili natin sa Panginoon para mas makilala natin siya. Alam nyo, sa chapter 1, no, uh, May magandang tanong, what does the preacher seek thinking it will make life worth living? Di ba? Kaya nga, yun yung binasa natin kanina. Di ba? At uh, ang tanong sa, sa base doon sa chapter 1.13 na binasa natin, no? what does he gain from all his wisdom? No? Since eh, sabi niya, uh, I applied my mind to examine and explore through wisdom all that is done under heaven. God has given people this miserable task to keep them occupied. Ako, ang dami ko inintindi sa buhay. Pero anong dinala sa akin? Ito, sagot. For with much wisdom is much sorrow. As knowledge increases, grief increases. Ito ang binigay daw sa kanya. Much grief and increased in sorrow. Oh my goodness, nakakala natin kapag uh, may wisdom tayo eh, baga, at naintindihan natin ang lahat, eh okay na. 
Pero si Solomon mismo nagsabi, no? With much wisdom, much sorrow, no? Pag nag-increase ang knowledge, no? nag increase din ang grief. So, ano naman ang sinik nitong preacher, no? Doon sa chapter 2, basahin natin 1 to 3. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, I said to myself, go ahead, I will test you with pleasure. Enjoy what is good. Hmm, ang ginawa talaga ito ni Solomon. But it turned out to be futile. O oh, naman, eh, imagine nyo, 700, ano, 700 wives, 300 concubines. My goodness. I said about laughter, it is madness. And about pleasure, what does this accomplish? I explored with my mind the pool of wine on my body my mind still guiding me we with me with me guiding me with wisdom and how to grasp folly until i could see what is good for people to do under heaven during the few days of their lives ayan kahit alak hindi sagot ay nako alam mo the first eight verses of chapter three are probably the most famous In the book of Ecclesiastes. In this section kasi, the preacher explains there is a time for everything in life. And God has made it that way. <clears throat> Kaya, ano yung sikat na sikat yun eh? No? There's a time for everything. Sa chapter 6 naman, the preacher speaks of the vanity of riches. And uh, in chapter 7, he discusses reputation. Sa chapter 8, matatagpuan niya naman doon. It is a turning point in the book. The preacher has been looking into everything the world has to offer and find uh, and finds it all vanity. Then he looks to God and is satisfied. Hinahanap niya sa mundo, pero nakita niya lang vanity. Pero tumingin siya sa Panginoon, doon lang siya na satisfied. In chapter 9 naman, He talks about the fate of all men, no, whether good or bad. No, that fate is death. No, however, there is one difference. The good are in God's hands. Yon. So, so chapters 10 and 11 naman are, rec- are a collection of proverbs on wisdom and folly. You know, folly means foolishness. So, according to chapter 12:7 now what happens to a child of god when he dies ano daw mangyayari pag namatay namatay tayo sabi dito and the dust returns to the earth as it once was and the spirit returns to god who gave it mm-hmm. si solomon no meron siyang conclusion sa chapter 12 verse 13 Matatagpuan natin dito ang sabi, when all has been heard, the conclusion of the matter is this, fear God and keep His commands. Because this is for all humanity. Kung lahat ng bagay na dinig mo na, lahat ng bagay na kita mo na, nalasap mo na, na-experience mo na, eto na ang conclusion. I therefore conclude, sa amin ni Solomon, fear God. No? And keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Ayan. Speaking of Solomon, pag-usapan naman natin yung mga awit ni Solomon or Song of Solomon. Alam nyo, the title Song of Songs, no, it means the finest of all songs. Solomon wrote 1,005 songs. Eh, ano pala ito? You know? Lyricist pala ito si Solomon Deg, si John Lennon. According to 1 Kings 4.32, no, sabi doon Solomon spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs numbered 1,005. This book is called The Song of Songs because it is, it is the best of these songs. In fact, this book is really a love story. However, it has been subjected to all kinds of interpretation na. Uh, both Jews and Christians alike see the book as an allegory. Ano ba allegory? A story or poem or picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning 
typically a moral or political one. Yung mga Hudyo sees it as a symbol of God's love for Israel. And tayo naman mga Krisyano, we, 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 we see it as a symbol of Christ's love for His bride, the church. No? The song itself no, does not make it possible to say with any certainty that either of these ideas is correct. You see, some see the song as a dramatic love story with three main characters. Si Empress si Solomon, si Ati Girl, <laughs> si The Girl, and her shepherd lover. Still others believe this is one of the many love songs that were sung during the week of a Jewish wedding feast. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the interpretation of this song, no? This song of song, in Song of Solomon, celebrates the tenderness and the beauty of human love. Wow. At maganda dito, it clearly teaches that God intends human beings to enjoy physical love within the commandments He has given. Oh, ulitin ko lang, ha? Kayong mga kabataan, ha? Within the commandments He has given, ha? Alam na this yun, ha? Okay. <laughs> All right, natapos natin ang fast cut ng Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. Tapos na tayo dun sa third section of the Old Testament, yung books of poetry. Anong susunod? Mm -hmm. Next attraction. Ito na, fourth section of the Old Testament. Ito na yung last section. Ako, matatapos na pa na tayo sa Old Testament. The Prophets. No? Meron kasing nahati rin ito sa dalawa, yung major at saka minor. So parang baseball lang. Major league at minor league. So hindi naman ibig sabihin na mas magaling itong mga nasa major profit. Na mas mahaba lang yung mga nasulat nila. So yung book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Na si Jeremiah din ang uh, kumbaga, sumulat. Uh, Ezekiel and Daniel. And sa minor naman, and si Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. <laughs> Nung ako yung unang Christian, ang tawag ko dyan ay Malachi. Malakay pala yan. <laughs> so, so, next week, next Wednesday, pag-usapan natin uh, unang-una si ang Book of Isaiah. So be excited. Samahan nyo kami ulit. Manalangin po tayo. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord God for the Book of Proverbs, for the Song of Solomon, for the Book of Ecclesiastes. For these are the wisdom book, our source of wisdom. Thank you Lord God for giving us wisdom. Thank you Lord God for being a wise God. Lord, we are sinners. And we want to repent, Lord God. Lord, we believe that you died upon the cross for us. That you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And we believe that on the third day, you rose from the dead and went to heaven to prepare a place for us. We accept you now, Lord, as our Savior, our Lord, our God, our friend. Come into our hearts and set us free from our sins. And because you are our Savior, we shall not die but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Also, Lord, we want to pray for those who are with COVID-19. Heal them completely, Lord God. Those who are sick tonight, Lord God. The, the, those who are watching with us, listening with, uh, with us. Uh, heal them, Lord God. May your peace be upon your people, Lord God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. God bless you. Maraming maraming salamat sa pagsama sa amin. Sa aming walk through the Bible, our virtual midweek live dito sa Facebook at sa YouTube. Kami po ang inyong LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. Uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. No? Or in fact, we'll see you on Sunday. Or we want to see you every day. 
we have our um, Nourish My Soul uh, series. So please join us uh, each and every time na available kami online. Panoorin nyo kami, ishare nyo kami at uh, para madami tayong mabless na puso. Maraming salamat po. God bless you. Good night. Bye.